Okay, we need to uh, just today look at getting water into a plant. So, the one thing that everybody knows, everybody knows this, is that plants get their water from soil. So, we're looking at here at a sort of big blow up of that root with the epidermis, the cortex between the epidermis and the steel with the endodermis, the pericycle and we're just looking at the xylem because we're only concerned with water at the moment and mineral lines. So if we looked at sort of soil close up and we're really hoping Mr Crompton's not watching this He'd probably tell me something different because he does geology. We've got soil particles, and in between the soil particles, we've got water. Um, and obviously, it's not pure water. I don't know why that's obvious, it might not be obvious to you. So, what this is soil water. has uh, water, mineral ions, like, well, I'll just put a couple in, nitrate and phosphate. <coughs> and of course it's mostly water, so it has a very high water potential. Hey, guess what I'm going to talk about now? Osmosis! So, the cell that you know from GCSE, one of your specialised cells is a root hair cell and a root hair cell has a higher concentration of minerals and other stuff and a low water potential. So root hair cells which give a big surface area, what we've got going on here is osmosis. So our root hair cells And they're only found near the tips of roots, uh, so you know, really at the very growing point. So when you see a root, you know, the tree roots in the park opposite where they're poking out the ground, they don't have root hairs, they're too big. So it's only just down near the very delicate tips, large surface area. What's their job? They're going to take up water by osmosis. And of course plants need mineral ions, so they need this to make um, amino acids. And they need that to make DNA, and they may need this to make uh, nucleotides, which contain phosphate. And they take up mineral ions then. And these are going against a concentration gradient, so they're active transport. Now, the other thing that everybody knows is that xylem is for water transport. So we've got to get it across this cortex, which is, if you remember from the um, microscope photograph that we just uh, did that this is um, you know it's quite a big place to go through so we have different pathways that that water could take so the cell wall uh, is kind of like a cotton wool so it can just soak up water can be moving across from root hair so through the cell wall and we call that the apoplast pathway 
Now that is the easiest route since the line of least resistance for water. Uh, no faffing about going across membranes and uh, messing around doing osmosis and going through plasmodesmata. Much easier to just sort of soak up through the cell wall. The other route is to actually go through the cytoplasm and through the plasmodesmata and sometimes you're going to have to cross a membrane and sometimes you don't. And that pathway goes through the cytoplasm and plasmodesmata. And cytoplasm has a Y in it and so does its pathway Symplast. Now there is an now obviously if you've got a lower water potential somewhere, water will move by osmosis. So there's also the idea that it could go, you know, from cytoplasm ooh, that's not really a nice pen to write with, is it? And it, you know, into cytoplasm and into the vacuole and out of the vacuole and into the cytoplasm and into the cytoplasm and into the vacuole and that would be called the vacuole the pathway it kind of does what it says on the tin i'm just doing it a bit pale because not you know i'm not thinking that's a very desperately important one to do so remember our two layers so here we've got the endodermis And here we've got the pericycle. And you'll see that I kind of stopped my uh, apoplast pathway there. And that's because of this, which is called the Casparian strip. And if you kind of drew a sort of 3D version of the endodermal cells, and remember that they sort of, they go all the way round and up from the steel, around the central steel, so it's, you know, it's everywhere. So this is my 3D version. Apologies. The Casparian strip <coughs> is right the way through the cell wall. It's kind of embedded through right the way through the, uh, the cellulose. And it's made of suberin, which is like cork, um, and is waterproof. Now this is an issue, isn't it? Because if it's waterproof, that means it's going to stop the apoplast pathway. And that is, in fact, its job. So it blocks the apoplast pathway. So why is that important? Well if the apoplast pathway is blocked, remember this is a solution of water and mineral ions, then the water has got to go into the symplast pathway at that point. It's going to shift direction, it's going to cross the cell membrane and go into the symplast pathway. So all of the water that's been flowing across the root suddenly ends up in this cell which is then going to have quite a high pressure and it's going to cross over into the pericycle and then hence forth into the xylem. And the mineral ions are going to have to go by active transport. So we're going to get at this bit, we're going to get active transport because they're crossing a membrane. mineral ions into the endodermis because it's going by the symplast and pericycle. So what we've got going um, on there is what we would call selective uptake. So we're actually going to be effectively pumping our mineral ions into there. 
So you need to know the significance of the Casparian strip. You need to remember that mineral ions are going to go in by um, active transport. You need to remember those two pathways and we'll come across them again in the leaf.